Ebony Dust had been sexually abused for most of her life, since the time she was three years old. In order to survive, Harmony took on a double identity when she was just 19 years old. Watch this. I would lead men to believe that, you know, I would be with them, or if they'd say, will you come away with me, will you marry me, you know, um, I'll leave my wife for you. You know, make them think that there was a chance and that they should keep trying and keep basically coming in and spending money trying to convince me to be with them, knowing I would never in a million years go off with any one of them. Harmony Dust was a stripper in L.A. Her stage name was Monique. At first I thought I would only do it for a couple of months, and I just became really caught up in the life. Harmony's parents split up when she was little, so she was used to pain. Over the years, she endured sexual abuse and was raped by many people. Please welcome to the 700 Club, the author of Scars and Stilettos, Harmony Dust. Harmony, it's Hi, great to have you Thank you for having here. me. Thank you. Here you are. You're a college student. You had a 4.0 grade average, grade point. Why were you working as a stripper? Um, I think that my background of being sexually abused and raped just kind of really laid the groundwork for that. So mm -hmm. I was already really used to being sexualized and objectified. And then I was also in a relationship with someone who was encouraging me in that direction. And it was a very unhealthy, abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And that just coupled with not having money and feeling desperate financially, just all of those factors came into play and made me feel really desperate. You know, you had, as I was reading your book, I, I was really taken aback by the number of times you found yourself being abused at the hands of somebody who should have been protective of you. Yeah. How did this impact your self-image as you grew up? I was just filled with a lot of shame and self-loathing. So rather than me becoming angry at, at the perpetrators of the abuse, I was turning all of that anger inside and really was convinced that there was something wrong with me, that I kept attracting those situations again and again. So how did you move from here you were, someone who was being abused by people in your life that obviously shouldn't have been doing that, and then you moved into the whole sex industry itself? How yeah. did that begin for you? Um, well, it began with um, me taking the idea to a college professor that I respected. And um, like everyone else in my life, I was surprised to find that he encouraged me in that direction, too, saying, really? you know, I wouldn't have to put it on my resume. And so it just kind of felt like I was out of options. But then the other thing that happened is that working in that industry gave me a false sense of empowerment over my sexuality. So here I had been victimized my whole life. Now you're and making the choice. Now I felt like I'm making the choice. I'm calling the shots here. But over time, I realized that that was a false sense of empowerment because I found myself feeling further victimized, and I was almost reenacting the scenarios of abuse that I had experienced. So how did you keep Harmony and Monique separate yeah. from each other and keep that all in your head in the right place? It was, it was really almost like a coping mechanism. I had to keep it separate because it just was too hard for Harmony to show up. It had to be somebody else. So I had the fake name and the fake identity and the mm -hmm. fake story and everything. But it just got to the point where Monique gradually began to take over my life and I lost sight of who I was. You said when we watched the setup piece, you said, you know, here are these men coming and, and saying, you know, will you marry me? I'll leave. And, and there was a sense of control from you. Was there anger and rage inside of you that you finally connected oh. with that said, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I got increasingly angry um, during the time that I was in the club and just all that pent up anger that I had towards the men I used to manipulate and control them. And and towards the end, I was getting I was becoming even violent with them when they would violate my boundaries. And um, yeah, I was just angry. How'd you get out of it all? Really, it just started with a friendship with a girl who showed me the unconditional love of God. And, you know, she was Christian. And Have I, you ever heard that message before? No. I had, I, like, I, I knew that there was some God, you know, and that Somebody people talked there. about him. <laughs> and, you know, I thought that he was just some angry guy who didn't like girls like me and wouldn't want anything to do with me. Mm -hmm. And so here I had this friend that was showing me a different facet of him, that he's loving and he's gracious. And, you know, it's the, that his goodness and his kindness that leads us to change and repentance. And she just showed me a picture of God that I had never seen before. And 
I loved when I was learning and um, I went to church with her eventually. At first I didn't want to, but she never made her friendship with me contingent on, you know, whether or not I went to church. So I never felt like I was some project of hers, you know. Right. I felt like a real person that she cared about. She really befriended you she in an really honest way. She really befriended me, right. Yeah. And I remember walking in the doors of my church that I'm still there 13 years later and felt like I'm home. This is where I want to be. And God just continued to do a work in my heart, and I learned what he, what he says is true about me. Yes. And then it became impossible to live in a way that contradicted that. How did God help you work through the shame factor? Um, forgiveness. I mean, forgiveness of myself was all, really almost even a harder battle than forgiveness of other people. Yeah. And um, and so, I mean, that was a huge part of the journey for me is learning to forgive myself and learning to forgive other people and learning that God himself has forgiven me and that, you know, that he's cast my, my sins into the sea of forgetfulness and just really not just hearing these scriptures and having them in my head as knowledge, but they really penetrated my heart. Today, you're a wife, you're a mother, and you're a social worker. Yeah. <laughs> And you have chosen to go back mm -hmm. to that to those places yeah. where you used to work. Why? Why are you going back there? I'm going back there because I care about the women in the club and and in, that are working the streets in whatever area of the industry. And I know that God does too. And I want them to know that they are the loved beyond measure, daughters of a king. And do they receive that message when you go back? They do. I mean, you know, you can see some of them are like, why are you doing this for us? Yeah. And but I, I mean, I've had so many girls just melt in my arms and break down in tears. Mm -hmm. And they're they're so, you know, like I was so desperate. And you want to believe that there's this kind of pure, true love out there that loves you, not for what you look like, not what you, but for what you can offer, but a pure love. And and so when we demonstrate that to them, it's I mean, yeah, what can you who can say no to that? Yes. Well, I know that there are lots of women who are caught up in the sex industry, and you've met lots of them who are there for many different reasons. Yeah. I mean, some from a trafficking background, yeah. they're not because they, they choose to be. Yeah. What do they need to hear the most? Um, what we tell them is that they're loved, valued, and purposed. And I think that, I mean, that really captures it all. I know for me, learning that I was purposed, that I was created with intention was so huge for me because up until that point, I was living my life with this sense of purpose, purposelessness that made me feel so hopeless and so out of control. But learning that I was purposed, that, that means that my creator created me with, with intention. And it caused me to look at my life and say, this can't be it. There has to be more. And so it propelled me forward in my walk with God. You know, you have an ability to relate to and to understand where the women that are involved in the sex industry are coming from. And they would relate to you that way. But there are a lot of Christian women who have a heart and who want to see these these women know the message of freedom. Yeah. What What can we do? Oh, my gosh. You know, women who have never had a background in this industry are just as instrumental in this sort of thing. We've trained um, outreach groups in 16 cities throughout the nation, and many are run by women who are just, you know, house, just you know, stay at home moms and, and just have yeah. compassion and love. And actually, sometimes the girls, you know, a lot of times they'll say, oh, it's so great to talk to someone that can relate to me. But sometimes when they talk to someone who's never been in the business, they're like, oh, it's so nice to talk to someone normal finally. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Someone who's like, you know, you're yeah. not you're not just here because you you know, you were, you used to be here, but because you really care about me. So, well, I, I think just reading your book would help a lot of people yeah. understand where a lot of these women are coming from and, uh, how you get trapped in something like this. And, you know, I, I just want to say that, um, well, first of all, let me say Harmony's book is called Scars and Stilettos. And, you know, very often we mask our pain with things that, make us feel in control, make us feel like we're on, on top of a situation that really is very out of control. There may be some of you watching today who can relate to what we're talking about here. Maybe you have done some things in your life. Maybe you're involved right now in some things that you've done to mask your pain, to that you've just been let into even out of your control. And yet, the message that God wants you to know today is that there's a way out for you. There's a new beginning for you. I don't know anywhere that you can get that but with Jesus Christ. But when the Bible says the one the Son sets free is free indeed, it really means that. You can see it in harmony today. She has a whole new life, a whole new beginning, not because she got her act together, but because Jesus Christ stepped into the middle of that. And she said yes. 
She said yes, and that's God's invitation to you today. And you know, you don't have to be involved in the sex industry. You can be somebody who's involved in drugs. Maybe you're up to your elbows in relationships that are inappropriate with people, not the sex industry per se, but relationships that are inappropriate and and that you'd like to see changed. You know, God can do that for you. He's no respecter of persons. So can I just invite you today to ask him into the middle of the mess of your life and let him clean you up, change you, give you a whole new beginning. Will you pray with us? We just, this is, Harmony goes in and talks to these young women. I'm talking to you now. It's the message of God's love. He sends those of us who've been rescued back to those of us who have not to say, come away, my beloved. I have a plan and your life does have purpose and meaning. So pray with me right now. Father, I want to know the kind of love and forgiveness and fresh start that Harmony's experienced. And God, I need it for my life. And I don't understand why you love me or why you'd accept me where I'm at. But I'm just saying I need you today. Will you come into my life? Will you make something meaningful out of the mess I've made? Will you heal my shame? Will you forgive my sin? Will you give me the power to live differently? Will you love me unconditionally and with the kind of pure love that Harmony talked about today? I want to know that. I want to know true love, and I want to love honestly and purely as well. So, Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for being the Savior of my soul. Thank you for for offering me a fresh beginning. I take it, and I take the gift of eternal life as well. I want to belong to you. So, Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Teach me your ways. My ears are listening. My heart is open to you. I give you everything that I am and all that I have. And I ask you to make something significant out of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Harmony, thank you so much. Thank you it's so been much a great for having treat me. To I have appreciate you here. That. I want to mention to people the book again is Scars and Stilettos. If you'd like to know more about Harmony's story, about her book, about the programs that she's involved in, go to CBN.com. And if you'd like more information for your own life on how you can be set free indeed by the one who died for you, you can get a new day. It's a packet put together for you, filled with information about God and his great love for you, and it's free. Go to CBN.com or call one 800 759 Nine zero seven hundred.